So coming back to our artery, we'll assume that we get a thrombus, but it's only partially blocked. The question is, what do we do about a partially occluded artery? Or more specifically, should you get it stented? This study published in 2017 randomised 2,287 patients with heart disease to either stenting and drug management or drug management alone. And stenting was shown to have no mortality benefit. And more recently, this 2020 study randomised 5,179 subjects with heart disease to either stenting plus drug management or drug management alone. And again, it found no mortality benefit. The thing is, stenting is really only good for treating a symptom of angina where it can allow more blood to flow through an artery that's partially blocked. It doesn't address the cause of sudden blockages and it doesn't reduce your chance of dying. Furthermore, if there's insufficient blood supply to a portion of your heart muscle, over time, the heart can actually make new blood vessels which act as a bypass or a detour. And these vessels are typically small and numerous, which means they're not obvious to us on angiogram investigations. But it does explain why many people who have blockages detected on angiograms often have no real symptoms to speak of. These patients almost certainly have these detours in place, which we more formally call collateral circulation. So coming back to infection, we already know that microbes form a key component of many atherosclerotic plaques. The addition of thrombus to the mix can only make this worse. This lab-based study found that circulating bacteria was incorporated into thrombi as they formed, the authors concluding that bacteria preferentially adhere to thrombi. Not surprisingly then, this study found that 58% of arterial thrombus contained bacterial DNA. And this leads us on to the next element of atherosclerosis progression, the transition from soft plaque to hard plaque. Let's consider for a moment calcific dental plaque. This is in fact nothing more than a mineralized microbial biofilm. Microbes in the oral cavity, primarily a bacteria with some fungi, secrete a protective biofilm made largely of polysaccharides and protein. And this protein, this biofilm, may then passively mineralise via diffusion of calcium and phosphate from saliva, forming a hard crystal called hydroxyapatite. This is the substance that your dentist scrapes off your teeth. And this also explains the predominance of heavier dental plaque on your lower teeth as this is where the saliva pools. Additionally, while biofilm forming microbes can utilize any macronutrients, carbs, protein, or fat, as energy sources, carbohydrates are far more efficient and they enable far more rapid production of biofilm. We know full well that soft atherosclerotic plaques can also be seeded with these microbes, the same oral microbes that cause dental plaque, not exclusively from the mouth, but quite often. And microbes that have the proven capacity to form biofilms in the mouth may also do it in the arteries. And they may also mineralize by the passive diffusion of calcium and phosphate, this time from the blood. And this is the cause of coronary artery calcification.